So welcome, happy Friday, everyone. We are here live at the Pittsburgh Youth Theater, Children's Theater, Sweet Bee Theater, and we are happy to be here with our second installment of All Things Chatham. My name is Aaron. Julian Serrano next to me is our guest host today. And today we will talk about the happenings in Chatham County over the past month. And today we also have some special guests who will get up and tell us about who they are, what they represent, what their products are. And so I'm really excited to be here. And I'm gonna get on out of the way and let Brother Julian bring up Aaron, then Jennifer, and then Michelle, and we're gonna get it going, all right? All righty, okay. All right, all right. Well, we're about to hear from Aaron Taylor. Um, he has started an urgent care in Siler City where one is badly needed, and he's going to tell us a little bit about it now. Right. Um, we started the first uh, urgent care in the uh, city of Siler City. Um, of course, you have one in Pittsburgh, but um, Siler City has never had an urgent care. We uh, we kind of covered the area, North Carolina and Arizona. Okay, well now when did you open up? We did a, what we call a soft opening uh, on May the 1st. Um, we will be doing a grand opening sometime in the near future. Alrighty, and um, tell us about some of the services that you offer. Well, we offer all of the services that uh, uh, one would find in an emergency room, except for we don't do an emergency yeah. service. Uh, I have heart attack, etc. Uh, it's not a trauma center yet. No, that is correct. Yeah. And, and what are your hours? Uh, we're from 8 to 8, um, Monday through f Saturday, and um, we have a short day on Sunday from 8 to 6. Okay, and um, um, what kind of, um, who are you looking for? As, as patients? I mean, are there any particular groups or, or over others that you expect to see? Or that you, you can specialize in? Or you don't know yet, but you know. Well, we're, we're pretty inclusive. I mean, if you're sick, we want you to come in and be healthy. Um, at, at the end of the day, um, we're just not looking, as you laid out earlier, for someone that has uh, trauma. We, you know, we, if they come into our, our, our clinic, we will refer them to the emergency room. But we are working hand in hand with uh, Chatham Hospital in terms of making sure that we, you know, send the people that appropriately need to be sent there, there and, and vice versa, they're sending the people to us. Okay, so you're actually kind of convenient to Chatham Hospital, I mean, is that correct? We're right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, we're the, right around the wall around the corner. Um, is there anything more you'd like to say? Well, um, what I'd like to say is that um, we are very um, happy and elated to be in the Silver City area. Uh, Silver City has a real sense of community, um, as well as uh, Chan County and Pittsburgh. All of these places that are very involved in providing excellent health care. We want to be part of the fabric of that. All right. Okay. Well. If there's, if there's anything more you'd like to say, yeah, go ahead and there's say one more. Uh, we decided um, after talking to several people um, that we were taking only the health insurance of Blue Cross Blue Shield, I think, mm -hmm. et, cetera, et cetera, We are now applying to take Medicaid. So I think that's big news. That's something that I wanted to uh, to share here today. And um, you know, as soon as we get the application in, and we'll be, we'll be taking Medicaid patients. Okay, that's terrific. That's, that's, that's a neat. It's great. It sure is. Okay, listen, good luck with it, and you know, I'm sure things are going to go great for you. Thank you. All right, you bet. Well, tell us a little, first of all, about um, Tick Warriors and then about the symposium that's, that, that's coming up. Okay, great. Well, Tick Warriors is a company that I started almost two years ago now. We're going to have our anniversary on Sunday. Um, it is intended to empower people with protection for people, pets, and property so that they can once again enjoy being in the out of doors but using products that are safe for them and for the environment. And at the end of the month on May 30th, we are collaborating. We've started a new arm of the company called Tick Born Conditions United and that is co-founded by myself and another lady named Beth Harrison Vanderhyde. 
and we are starting this collaboration and our kickoff will be on May 30th with an AlphaGal summit. So the summit is going to involve healthcare professionals and patients from many different locations, not only in the United States, but other continents as well. AlphaGal is a rising disease that is caused by ticks. It causes an allergy to mammalian products and it's devastating for many, many people that get it. It is life changing and we will be having a summit to educate people about it and empower them with information so that they can start learning more about this, this growing syndrome, alpha-gal syndrome. Um, isn't this area, maybe a little north of us, also one of the epicenters for it? And I mean, it seems to me I have had it, and I've known other people who have had, um, you know, the from the Lone Star tick, the alpha gel um, reaction of the allergen red meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Chatham County is very likely a hot spot, and we've unfortunately been known by public health professionals across the state as a, the tick spot, hot spot here in North Carolina. And many people here have alpha-gal. It's not a rare condition in this area, and it's very devastating. And aren't they finding more and more diseases that ticks bear that some they don't recognize yet? And yes. just that it's an evolving thing, mm -hmm. evolving problem. Mm -hmm. So the CDC came out with a report recently that talks about the increase in tick-borne diseases that are being discovered and more and more people are getting tick-borne diseases and more diseases are being discovered. And um, we've had several within the last year, I think Palisine was new on the scene. So yes, it's, it's a growing concern. Already, and tell us where is this symposium going to be taking place? So it's going to be right here in the Sweet Bee Theater, and we'll have people can, who can attend in person or join us online here on this station or on this uh, link, and it'll it's going to be great. Alrighty. Um, is there anything more that you'd like to tell me about? Oh, yes. So the Alpha Gal Symposium will be, I said it was Wednesday, May 30th. It's going to be from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. that evening, Eastern Standard Time. So that'll be it. And then if you can't join in person, you can watch the, the recording anytime. You can go to the, the website. Hodge Talk website. They actually ask questions, in fact, if you're watching. Yes, we because, will yeah, have the so, opportunity for yeah. people to ask questions. Okay. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's been great to come by and talk to you today. Well, so, uh, Ms. Wright, and this is Michelle Wright with the Chatham Health Department. And, um, and what, I'm not sure what you what you wanted to talk about, I have plenty of questions about to shoot you anyway. But. Okay, well, um, my name is Michelle Wright. I work for Chatham County Public Health Department. I, at the health department, am a health promotion coordinator, um, which is also classified as a health educator. So what I do is manage a program called the Amplify Program, which is directed towards faith communities. So I work with churches to help them develop health ministries and connect them to resources at the health department. We meet bi-monthly, we do conference calls, we're working on a spiritual health conference for the fall, and I do different things to just help them build and engage with their congregation as well as the larger community. Alrighty, but what kinds of problems do you think, does your, what's going on in Chatham's population, what kind of problems is the health department dealing with that, that you think we should know about? So, um, I can't specifically say what problems we're dealing with. Um, right now, we are in the middle of our 2018 community assessment, which happens every four years. It's something that's required by the state. So what happens in that assessment is that there's a survey portion where we sample the population all throughout the county, and we also do focus groups to get some of that qualitative data and listen to the thoughts that people have about health and issues in Chatham County. 
So once we're done with that process and we get all this information in, we get all these numbers, we have all these conversations, we're going to come back in about September or October and there's going to be a prioritization process. And that's when the health department will choose their top three or four priorities that will be carried out for the next four years. And that's what we're going to direct the majority of efforts towards. And that is going to be something that is community-based. Community members will be invited to attend and help us with the prioritization process. Um, a good avenue for that is the Chatham County Health Alliance, which meets on Tuesdays every other month from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It alternates cities, so we meet one meeting in Tower City and then the next in Pittsburgh, and we keep going back and forth like that. The next meeting is June the 5th, that's a Tuesday from 10 to 12, and it's going to be here in Pittsburgh at the Old Ag Center, which is at 65 East Street, right beside the health department. Uh, right. And where do you meet in Southern City on those days? The Southern. Western Chatham Senior Center. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, for the Amplify Initiative, I am always looking to recruit new membership, new churches. Um, and I say church, but this is open to all faith communities. It is a very diverse organization. Um, we're going to be meeting on Saturday, June the 2nd at the Health Department at 10 a.m. Um, we'll be meeting in the Dunlap Boardroom, which is located at the back of the Health Department. And again, this is just an opportunity for people to come together to connect with different communities, um, to gain access to resources. We do different trainings. I try to bring speakers in. And we work on things that the churches want to work on, and we figure out how to engage the community with that church. All right, OK. So is, is anything more you'd like to, hmm, to I'm thinking. The, now that you have our audience here and everything <laughs> like that? This um, is I'm also part of Chatham Organizing for Racial Equity. They do Racial Equity Institute trainings here in Chatham County. You can currently sign up for that. The next one is going to be on June 15th and 16th. It's a two-day process, but it's extremely wonderful. It addresses racism. It talks about the structure of it, not just personal interactions, but how it's embedded in systems and how that affects different communities. And so um, when you think about the way neighborhoods our zone, and you think about water in different places and access to care and access to healthy foods, it really breaks that down and helps you understand how this is not by accident, it's not because of laziness or because of different communities being apathetic about their health. There have genuinely been things in place that have placed people in marginalized categories. And so I would encourage you if you're interested in learning more about racial equity and how to bridge some of these gaps that go across education and poverty, to attend that training in June. And there's also going to be another one in October. And those dates are on the Chatham County Organizing for Racial Equity website. Um, if you put Chatham County, well, Chatham Organizing for Racial Equity into Google, that website should pop up. All right, it's terrific. That's terrific. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And good luck with everything that you have coming up. Thank you. <laughs> but Melissa, well, tell me about your theater and how this all came about. Well, Pittsburgh Youth Theater is something my partner Tammy Matthews and I started five and a half years ago. There's a wonderful little park uh, south of town in Pittsburgh called uh, Rocky, help me out here, Rocky something park. Wonderful little place, hole number eight. There's an outdoor theater. I said, honey, we should have Shakespeare in the park. And uh, she said, well, I don't know. And then five and a half year later, years later, here we are. We've got uh, Midsummer's Night's Dream this weekend, uh, May 12th and 13th, 2 and 6 p.m. Um, next weekend, we have uh, the complete works of William Shakespeare abridged, which is, a, it's got to be abridged. It would take you two weeks to well, do the works say, of Shakespeare. Yeah. And uh, it's a parody comedy that is absolutely wonderful. This is a community arts center with the only live performance theater in Chatham County uh, called Sweet Bee Theater. We're so happy that uh, the community has supported us enough to make this happen. There's not a government brick or a county nail uh, in the whole place. And it's all by folks showing up. So anyone who wants to see something absolutely beautiful, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 2 and 6 p.m. both days, come see A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, I'm making wisteria plants in the back. You might have seen me in the back of the studio here. And uh, people who appreciate beauty, who want to help kids, who want to help make Pittsburgh 
a wonderful place to live, a destination residence uh, location. Pittsburgh Youth Theater, Sweet Bee Theater in the Center for the Arts is just so pleased to be here and uh, I encourage you all to go to PittsburghYouthTheater.com, buy tickets, get more information, hope to see you soon. Alrighty. Um, would you like to say more or is that? Would I like to say more? Oh yeah, heck yeah, I'd like to say more. Tell me about you. Um, well, golly. I'm old. <laughs> I've never met you before, but I tell you what, there's an old guy I met the other day that said, yeah, you know, 15 years ago, you had to be in the county line if you were anybody. And uh, I said, really? And they said, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm interested in, in hearing about you, Julian. Well, I used to be an editor at the Durham Herald, and I went up the corporate ladder and down the corporate ladder and ended up working as, for myself in PR and then I applied for a job as an editor for a community paper. This was in the old independent regular newspaper. And this is 20 years ago? This, or is, so? this is in 2001. Oh, okay. Spring 2001. And um, it, was a, it was called Chatham Crossroads and they hired me. And it was a non for profit and they had a big grant and they had plans, and the, they didn't get the grant <coughs> renewed, and and the paper was 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 going to go under. Now, for for my part, I had they when they hired me, um, it was it was just it was nothing but crazy. Uh, they said, well, "Who are my reporters? Here's a list of people you're going to contact. You have an email list of people I never met." Um, my first paycheck bounced. <laughs> and it, it, it's, I had really no idea. It was, and it was just amazingly, all these people wrote articles. And some of the, some of the writers we have have actually never met, but a few of them. But they write, and they write very loyally to the paper. And so when the paper was about to die, I asked them if they minded if I were to take it over and try to do it on the basis of advertising. And sure, but you had to change the name because of the bylaws of the 5013C, so it became Chatham County Line and was first published as such in December 2002. Isn't that something? Gosh, I'm really happy to hear that story because you see this little paper and you have no idea who's behind it. It's so nice to shake your hand. Well, thank you. The other thing, though, is this community is just amazingly supportive. Amazingly yeah, we supportive. find that. I mean, we would not be here if it wasn't and for folks that wanted to to do something wonderful. And isn't it nice? Yeah, it is. The, you know, people contribute articles, they said that they contribute ads, and the paper just keeps chugging along. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having me on today. Alrighty. Well, thank you, and thank you for letting us use this lovely theater. Our pleasure. Alrighty. From my paper, um, on the top of the front, and also in Spanish on the back page, Nora Hain wrote about chain migration. She's a Chatham resident who teaches anthropology at NC State. And she uses you know, academic data and methodology, though happily not an academic writing style, when she discusses immigration. And she's, she's been a terrific contributor. Luis Mello Delgado has um, translated her articles into Spanish, and he's also written his own. English and Spanish articles for the paper, most recently concerning the um, statue in front of the courthouse, which is something that he would like to see moved to a museum. But that's um, that's anyway. But that's that's for him. But um, beyond that, in the paper, well, not in the paper because the election has taken place. But we had our primary election, and um, the sheriff has been elected to. To, to the office to which he was appointed and seems to have done pretty well and in the primary. And the one thing I don't know is whether, once again, Chatham had the highest voter turnout in the state. Because I know we did during, during the larger general elections. I don't know if that holds true for the primaries or not. You have to find it. Um, but that's, that's, that's sort of a good question. That's a question I like to put out there for um, people to think about. And um, 
the, among the other pieces that we have in, in our paper, um, I guess I want to talk about my own piece because I have to say I'm appalled that we're a state with a huge veteran population and a population of, of folks with um, combat-related post-traumatic stress, and they will prescribe them opium and get them addicted, but they will arrest them if they were to smoke pot to help with that thing. And the, the legislature has done nothing about it. They have done nothing on the one hand, nor have they done anything to stop the opiates on the other. And that's something I find absolutely appalling and backward thinking right now. So I don't know, is there any questions from the audience? Does anybody want to ask anything while I'm here? Could you, could you talk about <coughs> in more in depth what you'd like to see done uh, to help the veterans? Because yeah, that is an issue. Could you talk more about that? Well, I was going to say that I personally think that from what's been going on across the country with pot, that you know, medical marijuana is legal in more, way more places than it's not. Recreational marijuana is now legal in, in nine states in the District of Columbia, and there aren't any great pathologists. I think North Carolina needs to get ahead of the curve on this, because all of the surrounding states are going to legalize it, so there'll be nothing that they'll be able to do to repress it. And, but they won't get any of the benefit from the revenues that come in for that kind of thing. Well, well you know, I, I would certainly like to comment upon that. As I was saying earlier, everyone can see that I'm dealing with this facial palsy. And of course, I went the conventional medicine right away, and that was very helpful. And now I'm uh, going to see a very nice acupuncturist named Debbie Grimes here in Chatham County, where she utilizes acupuncture on my face. Uh, a technique called moxa, which is a, a burning sensation to remove the dampness, and she uses a CBD oil for pain that she massages me with, and that is a derivative of the cannabis plant. So, of course, I'm benefiting right now from what uh, Duke University calls integrative medicine, where I use the conventional medicine right away to help uh, 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 stop the progression, but now, in order to get the nerves moving and, and get my mouth back right, I'm using alternative methods. And so the two aren't separated. The two should work together in a collaborative balance. So uh, it's interesting to see that happen. And of course, I can't pay, I can't use my, my health insurance to pay for the alternative care. I can only use it for the conventional care. So those are issues that we should be thinking about. And then also let's look at the budget differences in the states that have decriminalized and you know I, I think the last stat that I read is it cost $75,000 to maintain one prisoner for a year in a prison system and when we start to multiply you see those numbers are astronomical well for nonviolent criminals and definitely for, for uh, those uh, uh, cannabis users or what have you that's money that's being thrown away on a prison system and in, in, in prison people and that doesn't even go to the conversation of what we did, what someone deals with when they come out of prison and, 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 and all of that. So to me, that's definitely an issue. Go ahead. Well, I also was going to say the other part of that, that there's a lot of racism involved with it because um, um, people of color are no more likely to use marijuana than, 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 um, than white people in the general population. True. I was just at Shakur this past weekend. Believe me, you can smell it everywhere. And I didn't see too many people who look like me out there. But I was, but the people, they're disproportionately punished. That's right. People of color. That, that's right. Face legal consequences. That, that's right. And that's, I mean, it, it's almost, you know, it, it, it's almost a, a way to, um, to perpetuate racism. That's right. In a real way. I think we will have to have a, a, a conversation about this. Uh, in and of itself will have to yeah, be a, yeah. a, a live stream. You know, speaking of Shakur, we did have some very cool things going on in Chatham County, which I was able to take the camera out and about and get some footage that you will see when we edit and, and put this on our site. So the Clyde's Fest, and I got to yeah. meet Clyde. I didn't even know there was a Clyde. Oh, certainly. And I well, met, he's a character. He, he's a character. I got him on camera. So you'll be seeing that and uh, his story about how 
Barishnikov came and wanted to buy one of his uh, 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 pieces of art, and he said, no, but I'll give it to you, and I'll go to, you know, we certainly do have some characters, and I was glad to be at the Clive Fest. Uh, the Abundance Foundation had uh, an event where it, did with fa it dealt with fashion and, and, and style and whatnot. They had speakers in. I went to their festival and, and caught that, and that was really great. You'll get to see some of that fashion show and some of that conference on TajTalk.com. And then I, I was also at the uh, event that El Vinculo Hispano had in yeah. Silo City, uh, and where uh, Percy Crutchfield, who, uh, who was running for sheriff, and Mike Robertson came out to address the ongoing issue uh, in the Latino community. And uh, that was a great event. And as always, uh, uh, Ilana and her staff do a great job of uh, engaging the community and always uh, reaching out to us in the media to come and be a part of that. So as we go into the summertime, we know that people are getting ready for uh, camps and vacation and all that. We're going to keep uh, doing this and reaching out. So we, we want to tell people that when you see someone doing something great in Chatham County, will you let us know so that we can report about that? And uh, if, if, when you see anything wonderful happening, we don't want to just talk about uh, uh, serious topics, although we do need to have those conversations. There's some very wonderful, positive things constantly happening in Chatham County, so we want to make sure that we share light, shed light on that. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's this is a vibrant, lively county, and what people do is very interesting. I mean, it really is. And, and, and everybody who around here also wants to know about it. Too. And and the Chatham County Line does a great job. They they do have a page that's dedicated in Spanish, so that they're constantly reaching the greater community. We do look to have a talk show host that will be completely in Spanish, so that. Uh, we're engaging the community, uh, the, the, com the community at large. So, you know, we're, we're happy about what we have going on. As always, get the Chatham County line because this brother puts a lot of work into it and has some of the, uh, some of the great people in our county who contribute to that. And I think, what, 6,000, 10,000 copies go out monthly somewhere in that range? This, was, this past month was, I guess, it was between five and six. Okay. But it varies. And, and, yeah, so. and they must be going because I, I looked all over over the past two days to find a copy so I could read it, and I couldn't find it. So that's a good thing, I guess, that I could not find it. Is that good, we think? Well, we, we, we're not sure. We have to find it. That's right. All right. So uh, we, we had hoped to have Casey Mann here today to, uh, to go in-depth about uh, everyone who won and, and how the elections went. Uh, but unfortunately, she wasn't feeling well. But we will still cover that in June uh, and, and go through that thoroughly. And hopefully, I can have Brian Bach come out and talk uh, and just and share his point of view. But yeah, we're happy about all this. And although I forgot the backdrop that says discuss, define, deliver, that's what we do here is we discuss, define, and deliver because this is the people's platform. And so we want everyone to feel welcome and your voice to be heard. What does she got for us today, Billy? Well, that's, I, I, um, you already, you already got what I got. All right, <laughs> all right. Well, since I got what he got and y'all got what we got, <laughs> I think we can, can we sign off now? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm, All right, tell the people who you are. Okay, I'm Julian Serrano, editor and publisher of Chatham County Line, and, and I'm right here with Aaron Hall, and we're going to be, it's, the, the motto of Chatham County Line is we're all voices are heard. Right, well, all this is gonna be, well, that's in print. <laughs> and so, so but, no, but this is really our earth. Live stream. Awesome. That's, that's and and on behalf of, of, of our crew uh, at ToshTalk.com and our, 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 our great brother Gustavo and Terry McMillan, we are very happy to be here. We will see you uh, next month live here at Sweet Beat Theater. Discuss, define, deliver. We are ToshTalk.com. Happy Friday, y'all.